Now that we have created users and groups, it is time for us to protect these users and groups from being compromised. So for this, we have two defense mechanisms. The first one is to define what's called a password policy. Why? Well, because the stronger the password you use, the more security for your accounts. So in AWS, you can set up a password policy with different options. The first one is you can set a minimum password length and you can require specific character types. For example, you may want to have an uppercase letter, lowercase letter, number, non-alphanumeric characters, for example, a question mark, and so on. Then you can allow or not IAM users to change their own passwords, or you can require users to change their password after some time to make your password expired. For example, to say every 90 days, users have to change their passwords. Finally, you can also prevent password reuse so that users, when they change their passwords, don't change it to the one that they already have or change it to the one they had before. So this is great. A password policy really is helpful against brute force attacks on your account. But there's a second defense mechanism that you need to know going into the exam. And this is the multi-factor authentication or MFA. It is possible you already used it on some websites, but on AWS, it's a must and it's very recommended to use it. So users have access to your account and they can possibly do a lot of things, especially if they're administrators, they can change configuration, delete resources, and other things. So you absolutely want to protect at least your root account and hopefully all your IAM users. So how do we protect them on top of the password? Well, you use an MFA device. So what is MFA? MFA is using the combination of a password that you know and a security device that you own. And these two things together are have a much greater security than just a password. So for example, let's take Alice. Alice knows her password, but she also has an MFA generating token. And by using these things together while logging in, she's going to be able to do a successful login on MFA. So the benefit of MFA is that even if Alice has lost her password because it's stolen or it's hacked, the account will not be compromised because the hacker will need to also get a hold of the physical device of Alice that could be her phone, for example, to do a login. Obviously, that is much less likely. So what are the MFA devices option in AWS? And you need to know them going into the exam, but don't worry, they're quite simple. The first one is a virtual MFA device. This is what we'll be using in the hands-on. And so you can use Google Authenticator, which is just working on one phone at a time, or using Authy, which is multi-device. They both work the same way, except one is multi-device. And personally, I use Authy because I like the fact I can use it on my computer and on my phones. So for Authy, you have support for multiple tokens on a single device. So that means that with the virtual MFA device, you can have your root account, your IAM user, another account, another IAM user. It's up to you. You can have as many users and accounts as you want on your virtual MFA device, which make it a very easy solution to use. Now we have another thing called a universal second factor or UTF security key. And that is a physical device, for example, a YubiKey by Yubico. And Yubico is a third party to AWS. This is not AWS that provides it. This is a third party. And we use a physical device because maybe it's super easy. You put it on your key fobs and you're good to go. So this YubiKey supports multiple root and IAM users using a single security key. So you don't need as many keys as users. Otherwise, that will be a nightmare. Then you have other options. You have a hardware key fob MFA device. For example, this one provided by Gemalto, which is also a third party to AWS. And finally, if you are using the cloud of the government in the US, the AWS Gov Cloud, then you have a special key fob that looks like this that is provided by SurePass ID, which is also a third party. So that's it. We've seen the theory on how to protect your account, but let's go in the next lecture to implement that. So I will see you in the next lecture.